Affordable and walkable, two things that typically don't overlap in American cities, but I'm here to prove otherwise. Buffalo? That's right, Buffalo. I would describe the culture in Buffalo as a third Midwest, a third East Coast, and a third Canadian. Sorry, Canadians. Buffalo is filled with historic walkable neighborhoods. They each have their own charm and they're filled with locally owned businesses. You have biking, hiking, fishing, kayaking, and skiing at your disposal. But if you live here, you definitely want to stock up on your vitamin D through the winter as the sun will mysteriously disappear for weeks. Now with that said, the summers are wonderful. The food is cheap, greasy, and delicious, and we can't forget about the bills. Buffalo has a modest light rail line. It's six and a half miles long, and it runs right down Main Street, and part of it runs underneath Main Street. Let's jump right into the best neighborhoods and how they provide excellent walkability, bikeability, and access to transit. And in this case, not a whole lot of transit. We'll start just north of downtown in Allentown, or otherwise known as Josh Allentown. I guess you could call it a gentrified, artsy neighborhood by day and a hub for nightlife by night. It's easily walkable since it's fairly compact and has a grid-like street layout. Allen Street runs east to west, and it's where you'll find iconic restaurants like Billy Club and corner stores like Bill's Food Mart. I guess everything is called Bill or Billy around here. The Allen Medical Light Rail Station is underground, and it'll take you downtown or up to Delaware Park, which is definitely the best park in the city by far. Renters rejoice. I actually found a studio for less than $1,000 right on Allen Street in this building here. Allentown arguably has the best and oldest housing stock in the city, and that's saying a lot because there's a ton of great old houses in this city. Like this four-bedroom house, which is only $280,000. But in Allentown, my favorite house that's currently for sale is this pink house built in 1900 for $480,000. We'll continue north up Elmwood Avenue and arrive in Elmwood Village, which is home to a nice mix of college students from nearby universities along with young professionals and families. If you're a fan of museums and architecture, then this is where you want to live. Your groceries can be had at the Lexington Co-op, which is located right on Elmwood Avenue. It looks like Elmwood Village has a few more options for restaurants and entertainment than Allentown. JT's for Italian, but if you want the best pizza, Gino's New York Pizzeria's gotta be the spot. You're looking right at around a thousand dollars a month for a one bedroom apartment like in this building here on Elmwood Avenue or for a young family you have plenty of space in this 3,000 square foot home for less than 400,000 on St. James. And as we continue further north past Delaware Park we find ourselves in North Buffalo. This neighborhood is known for its diversity, a healthy mix of lower income residents along with very wealthy areas in a growing immig immigrant community. Target isn't too far away, but you can't go wrong with the trusty Lexington Co-op for weekly groceries. You do have multiple bus routes on several neighborhood streets and the Amherst light rail station close by. Hurdell Avenue actually rivals or even surpasses Elmwood Avenue and Allen Street for the best commercial corridor in the entire city. You can hit up Seasoned if you're feeling fancy. Bertha's Dinah looks like a perfect hangover cure spot. A majority of the housing in North Buffalo is duplexes, multifamily, and apartments like this three bedroom upstairs apartment for only 1500 bucks. Buffalo has many more walkable pre-war suburbs like Front Park and Grant Ferry but the light rail station is nowhere near these neighborhoods. Buffalo's bike infrastructure is sorely lacking. The quote unquote bike lanes aren't protected at all, therefore basically pointless. Meanwhile, if you go right across the border in Toronto, the Canadians will show you how it's really done. Buffalo, New York isn't gonna wow you with its culture and amenities, but it's definitely the safest city I've covered thus far. Buffalo is the poster child for the Rust Belt resurgence. What cities do you wanna see next? Let me know in the comments. Thank you.